Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Swift Crate Customs, and in this video, I'm going to share with you how I created this design in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software that I added to the top of my shoebox. Make sure to check out the links in the video description below for additional information and the video on cutting and using the easy crease tool for the score lines on this box project. In this video, we're going to go over the steps for the text on path and how I created this design in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software. It does utilize features that are Caesar Leonardo Pro features. So let's take a look at how I created this. So I knew I wanted this design to be small, so I am going to actually work on top of my box here. I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna choose Control G and I'm going to group that. So you can see that here in my layers panel. I'm going to be working with this and I just, I'm gonna lock this layer so it doesn't move around. But what I'm going to do is design it at the size that I want it to be cut for the spacing and the textiles that I'm gonna be using. You can see over here, I was testing out some additional ideas in the Leonardo Design Studio library and seeing if I wanted to add those to my box. In the end, I decided to create this text design. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this text on path, but I wanna create the path first for the size of my design. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to come over here to my draw shapes. I'm going to grab the create circle and I'm going to position and draw a shape on the top of this box. This is the top part of the mini shoe box that is a Caesar Leonardo design. So I'm going to just start by drawing a shape. And then I can come over back here to my properties panel. I just need the stroke on this shape and I'm gonna change it to black. So I just moved the color wheel around so it is black. And then I'm gonna zoom in here. And the reason I'm designing it this size is I want it to fit on the box in a specific area and I wanna make sure that I have space for my design. So I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit and position it. Since I locked that layer, I'm not able to grab it unless I unlock it. I can unlock this layer and I can use the align tools and kind of position that. So my text is going to be a text on path. It's going to arc around the top of this. So at the moment, it feels to me it's a little bit still too big. And so I'm just going to position that and then use my align tools again. And then once I have that done, I can come over here and lock that layer just so that I'm not grabbing the box. It helps to keep it out of my way. So I have this path that I want to add text to path on. So I'm gonna come down here. It is a Caesar Leonardo Design Studio Pro feature. It is text on path, and I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up for the text on my path. So this, it, with my design was selected, this is the arc that I want it to be on. And then I can see my score lines here so I can kind of get an idea of positioning. So what I wanna do is I'm going to highlight the text. I'm gonna choose um, happy, type out my word, and then I can start to adjust and play around with the design. Now, currently in the software version that I am using, it is the current version as of today on the Caesar website. There are no character spacing tools in the software. So I am going to actually increase this and I'm going to adjust this. But the font that I'm going to be using has, if I create it without any character spacing in it, it's going to overlap. So we're going to, I'm gonna show you some um, tricks that I'm gonna to use to account for that. I'm going to bring this up for a size. Let's see. And in the end, my design is actually going to be down more in the middle. I'm gonna apply it myself so I can position it. But what I want is the, for the, to get the idea for this. And then I'm gonna come up here to the font style. The font style that I wanna use is, it is like a coach font, athletic font. So let me see here, um, not coach, it is, let's go down. So this was a sports font that I wanted to use, but what you can see here is that currently with this spacing, 
having no option to do character spacing, those letters would kind of weld together when I close the um, text style panel or the text to path here. So I'm going to kind of give this a little bit of a trick. I'm going to come back to the properties. I'm going to click in between H and A, just add a space and be uh, between the A and the P. If you wanted to, you could do the other letters as well, but that's going to throw it off. It would just depend on your design. It doesn't throw it off too much. Um, it does give it a little bit different look. Let's see what happens when I just take these out. This is what I did originally. So then I have my design here. And really just depends on what you want to be working with. Um, I have this idea in my head. And after I look at this, I don't particularly like the curve. I want it to be a little less. So I'm going to actually hit cancel here. And I know you want this to be like the quick magic video, but it doesn't always work that way. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to adjust this down a little bit. Um, designing just takes time and every everybody's going to be different in what it takes. But I have a particular idea in mind, and I want to make sure that I am covering that. So I'm going to start over. I just needed to change and alter the shape of that just a bit to make it a little bit squattier. I might even want to make it squattier. I don't want too much of a curve there is what I'm going for. So I'm just going to highlight those two again, center to get an idea, and then lock my box layer. I'm going to come back down here to this text. Oh, I need to select my path first, text on path. And I think that'll work a little bit better. So I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to automatically type this space in between since I know what I'm working with. And then I can increase the size of the font. And I'm going to come up here to my font styles again, choose LW Sports, and there I have it. So now, while I don't have the character spacing and it looks really odd right now, I'm going to go in and I can adjust this for what I want it to look like. So I'm going to come down to Apply. There are still ways to work with it. I'm going to zoom in here. And then what I can do is hit Escape to cancel that. Right now, it is all one text. If I double click on it, it brings me back to the text to path, but it doesn't show me my text. That's a little bit odd. Um, what I want to do, because there are no character spacings in this, I can't just use that. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to choose paths and I'm going to choose break paths. And what you're going to see is all those little holes are filled in. That's not a problem. I can go ahead and I can move this little, um, actually I want to keep that arc, keep that arc there. I'm going to lock it in place so I don't grab it. So now what I can do is I can select left click, drag across everything, select that Y, and I can make these individual paths again. And it really just depends on what you are working with, if it's worth the time to create your design in this way. I am, I have a vision in my head that I want it to work with. Combine paths. So now we have all of our paths there. So I can select this A and I can kind of move this over. And then if I want to rotate it just a little bit, I hold my shift key down. I'm going to rotate that just a little bit so it's on that path. And then I can do the same thing with the H. You can see here the H was on a sharper angle. So if I hold my shift key down, I can kind of adjust that as I want it. And what I can do is I can actually bring in, I'm going to draw a line. So bring in my drawing tools. I'm going to draw a straight line, hold my shift key down, click, and then click again. I'm going to right click and choose done. This kind of, to me, works as it's a straight line if I hold shift down when I draw it. Now I can look at my letter spacing or letter um, configuration here and see if I'm happy with that. 
<laughs> happy. That was not even planned. <laughs> and I will find it funnier than anybody else. Um, but so I use those lines and those tools. To me, this works for me. This is going to be good. I'm gonna actually undo that, move that back up here, and then hold my shift key down and rotate this just a little bit more, I think. And I can bring that, hold my shift key down and use my arrow keys. And I can get some more um, smaller increment movements. And then another tool I'll show you here under file and preferences. If you go to all preferences, you your keyboard nudge, you can actually change that amount so that it has a smaller nudge amount when you use the keyboard arrow keys. So if you are one of those who is constantly adjusting your designs, that might be a good option for you to change or hold your shift key down and it's going to adjust in smaller increments. So I'm happy with that. I can go ahead and move this line off. I will delete that here in just a second or I can hide it. Um, great part about that is if I just eyeball, click the eyeball, it's going to hide it. I can do the same thing here with the circle that is currently locked. I'm gonna hide that as well. It's still there, but it is locked and hidden. So now I'm going to left click and drag across everything. I can go ahead and group those together. And then I'm going to type out my next word. So I'm going to type out Valentine's Day and choose a font style. Choosing font styles can sometimes be the longest part of the process. So I'm going to select a couple here and see what I end up with. Actually that uh, first one, I'm going to select that and choose apply. When I first created this design and zoom out so I can come down here and pull this in. When I first created the test design, I welded or I un ungrouped the design before I actually saved it. So I couldn't remember what font style I chose. Now I'm gonna bring this down in here and let's adjust the color just simply so that we can see it a little bit better on the screen. I'm gonna bring this in here. And if you wanted it to be big like that, that wouldn't be bad. Um, bring this down just a little bit more, I think. And then I'm going to left click, drag across both, and I'm going to center this and see how it looks. So we have some overlap here on the A and a little bit of overlap on this T. I kind of like that. Um, let's see how it looks. Because I have the Y overhang, let's make this just a little bit smaller. Left click. Use my align tools. Oh, I, I was gonna change the color. I said I was gonna change the color and then I didn't. So that gives you a little bit of a contrast idea between the happy and the Valentine's Day. Again, whatever you are working with, it's you're going to have differences in how you create and how you design. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the Valentine's Day. I'm going to come down here to my build contours and I want to build an editable contour, a cut only. So I'm going to choose cut only. I'm going to include the holes and I want to increase this amount. I'm going to just change the color so we can see it on the screen and that's a bit too much. So let's try with that. It will depend on your font, what works for you. I think that's a little bit big. So I think I will start again and I build contours, editable cut contour, include holes, and I'll change this color so we can see it. And then let's go, I can't remember if that's, let's try this one, click apply. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to use that offset. I'm gonna select the offset, hold my shift key down, click on happy. So both of those are selected. And then I'm going to come down here and I am going to select this stamp keep. You could use several of these different tools and I, you could actually use remove front. So show that here. 
So now I have cut this out of the A, so the overlapping sections on this are cut out. I'm gonna change this back to black. And actually I'm gonna select both and click this little black here to make sure that they are the same shade of black. And then I'm going to be cutting this design out of white um, adhesive vinyl to apply onto my box. The possibilities are really endless in the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio software. It is different than other software programs. They cannot make a program that is exactly the same as another company's program. So there are some things that you do a little bit differently. There are also multiple ways that you can do different techniques. For instance, I mentioned that, let's see here, if I select both of these, it'll give me the options. I could use remove front or I could use stamp keep. If I had used stamp keep, it would have kept both of the designs and I would have just had to move my offset out of the way. Control Z or undo is also your best friend when you are designing in the software. Play around with it, push buttons, have some fun and see what you can create. Now for my final design, I did scale it up to fit on the top of the box for the design I was using. With this particular design, because of the spacing between the letters and the outline, if I scale it down, that means the spaces are smaller. That's gonna be very difficult to weed and to cut. The Romeo and Juliet are amazing machines, but you really have to give them a chance. I realized here that the H wasn't grouped with the rest of the design, which happened when I did that offset and removing front. So I'm just kind of adjusting it here. But what I wanted to point out for this particular part is that I then added individual weeding boxes around everything and I adjusted those weeding boxes. Select your design on the send tab, then click the letter X on your keyboard. That's going to give you an individual weeding box around each of those designs. And then I can just scale that, grabbing those bounding boxes and adjust as needed. And that's exactly how I sent it to the machine. Make sure to do your test cuts before you start. That will save you materials. You can see here, I did several test cuts. My first one wasn't quite um, what I wanted it to be. Uh, my blade is very well used and sometimes I can never remember how long I've had my blade. So I always want to make sure to do my test cuts. It saves me time and I wanted to show the process. So I sent that design off to cut and when it was finished, here is a look at weeding that design. Now this is sped up and if you do the offset, you do wanna be very careful if you're using a font like I did where all those little pieces are connected. It did take me a little bit of time to weed this design, but I just went carefully and I love using the Caesar weeding tool. It helps a lot. It did take me practice to get used to because I had another tool that I was using for years and years, um, but I just, carefully weeded this design. I actually cut all four of those and I only recorded weeding the one. But you just wanna go careful and there is some very intricate pieces cut in here that the machine did very well on because I did my test cuts. And then once I had that one weeded out completely, I had to get all the cavities from inside the Valentine's Day. And that's what you're seeing me um, do here. I was then able to just cut that piece apart and apply transfer tape. And then of course, it's up to you and where you place that design on your box. No matter where you designed it in the software and how you position that in the software, you are still the one that's in charge of where it goes on your box. I think these turned out wonderful. Um, I used some very high quality cardstock and here's a close up look at that. Make sure to check out the links in the description below this video for additional videos on creating this mini shoe box. And I can't wait to share these with my family. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There is additional information linked in the video description as well. And happy crafting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.